was a good sequel show to uh, Steve Colbert. Anyway, hey guys, what's up? It's uh, Richard Kidd of Richard Kidd Reviews, and uh, what you're about to see is a third-party uh, nerf review. Long story short, a Busby wannabe. <laughs> Um, but the real reason why I'm in toy form is because I'm going to do some brief channel news right here. Um, turns out my Comic-Con 2015 news, officially speaking, um, <clears throat> I don't know how to put this. When I was checking my privacy settings uh, for my um, uh, YouTube channel, I accidentally deleted the video. Um, so I will re-upload it um, next week along with what I will be planning on uh, Ninja Episode 34. So, until then, enjoy the X-Shot, uh, review. Take care. Yeah. Alabama's always gonna be the crazy state. I'm just saying, politics-wise, I better stop now before this gets crazier. Later. Hey, everybody, it's, uh, Retro Kid of Retro Kid Reviews. Hope you enjoyed my, uh, surprise future review. Um, here's a surprise, uh, third-party nerf review of the X-Shot Vigilante. Uh, take my word for it, this is really it, uh, for those who need to... Uh, go to a regular review. They may have the box uh, card right here for that. Um, with that said, um, here's the overview of the blaster itself before I get into the functionality. I haven't really done a uh, overall look of it. Um, for uh, yes, it is a third-party blaster. Yes, it's X shot, basically a Busby kind of thing. If you're in the Nerf community, getting on point. Um, it had a couple of things. It had a very nice. Um, Knife Finder uh, wannabe. Um, it had really good range uh, compared to X Shot standards, I guess. Um, for the purposes of time and this angle, surprisingly, I don't have time to get the uh, do darts it comes with. It's kind of like Kush darts, but um, very, very generic. Um, to put it in terms you can, I can, under you can understand. It could fit surprisingly well with a uh, clip uh, fed blaster. Here's a retaliator to pretty much prove that later on in the, in the video um also these um x shot um targets are pretty easy to uh put up um put together i mean it's meant for probably a younger audience so it makes sense so uh take my word for it it can happen uh i'm gonna try to do it on camera one handed no less uh don't do this at home because you'll look like an amateur youtuber uh, uh. Anyway, well, when I'm finicking with that later on, uh, it's pretty easy with two hands, obviously, because I'm, you know, on my camera. Um, here's what the targets look like. This time, I think this variant of the Vigilante is kind of a zombie kind of design. Um, it's got nice targets. It's got um, uh, decent range when you go, like, really close to it. It's not for going up against Nerf, uh, not by a long shot. Um, more on that in the review right now. And here's the blaster itself, and about ready to fire uh, just before I do. Um, a lot of these double shot uh, looking uh, blasters, or barrel break if you got the official one, um, have a, a stock, but it's very small. Um, mainly because um, it has uh, ammo space. Um, I don't have all the darts, but believe me, I have enough to work with. Uh, here's the uh, darts itself. I guess uh, X Shot wanted to make it more, um, I guess, nowadays streamlines instead of how I think Busby tried to pass with previous streamlines. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. What I am sure is that um, this is not a uh, smart AR kind of profile. If you've been used to um, blasters like this, they might have a smart AR system like the, uh, uh, the 2x4 uh, uh, Rapid Fire 2x4. I forgot the exact name. I had the blaster. I, might have a review for that too. Uh, it was a good blaster. Um, so it won't have a smart AR. Um, so basically what that means is it's going to like be stuck to whatever barrel it's uh, it's going to fire. And then fire, fire the next one. It's a very uh, complicated system but it makes sense like that. Um, if my camera has it picked it up, it's a very ratchety um, blaster. So technically... Uh, it. it I know every, I bet your mom or parents or whatever would be like, oh, you were doing so loud, running around with nervous stuff. I'm like, yeah, this is more loud on the user than the person around you, surprisingly. Uh, once you get past, I guess, the headaches of uh, that kind of ratchety sound, uh, here are the barrels themselves, uh, the first one and the second one. Surprisingly, could not fire um, prior uh, third-party darts like the Busby stuff 
for no reason. So I had to come in with uh, my hot, not my hobby knife, uh, my Swiss Army knife, and like shave the lip of the barreling. So basically, oh, I think the reason why they're not gonna fire um, the other guy's darts is that um, it's probably this dart specific, which is kind of a negative. I'm not gonna lie. Um, uh, but what, and I also had to like uh, get my uh, needle rolls pliers down there and like. I I can't really get into the whole dart post aside from the dart post it has like no air restrictors whatsoever, uh, surprisingly, from everyone I've seen online that has been talking about it. Um, I'll put links to whoever said it first I guess I don't know. So I'm gonna work with the um, Stark darts first and I'm gonna see if I can experiment. Uh, how much uh, how many darts this thing can handle. Um, but before I get to that, um. Here's their Knife Finder wannabe. Um, it's kind of like a jolt. Uh, it's like it's very small. Like I, I, I like I have no gripping, other than like my middle finger. Surprisingly, um, the Prime is keychain oriented. If you need to do like a keychain mod for, um, I guess your Knife Finder or Fire Strike, uh, this is definitely the. Uh, Receiver to do it, I guess. Uh, the finger port. I forgot the exact term. I haven't uh, kept up on my uh, fire strikes in a long time. I still have it, by the way. I'm actually looking at it. Um, it hasn't been modded. It can handle everybody's darts uh, very successfully. Um, here's an old um, end strike uh, sticky to prove that it will feed. Uh, it's feeding very well. The air, uh, the air seal is pretty dead on, and yeah, I get fire. Um, it's like a pocket rocket. It's like a bat, like a last ditch kind of blaster because there's no ammo holder other than this top rail here. Start the car outside. Um, aside from that, um, it can still handle every everybody else's darts like uh, an old uh, whistle or I used to call them screamers. Um, obviously, it's gonna also handle. Hang on. Oh, that's actually pretty well. I'm still experimenting with these blasters, if you can tell. I uh, also can handle the uh, newer, um, I guess, the Elite Darts pretty well. Uh, it might have more range, I guess, with the Elite Darts, because I guess it's how it was designed, I guess. Let's see. Yeah. It can handle Elites very well. Um, again, if you're going to use third-party blasters or have a third-party war, um, this would be a great last-ditch kind of blaster, and you could pick up whatever. If you're allowed to pick up uh, Darts in the Field, um, I would definitely recommend this if you have no options left and you're down to the wire on what to war with. Um, so that's a good pro um, for the whole packaging. I wish I had time to find the packaging. I might have thrown in recycling by now. Like, you wouldn't be associated with this kind of stuff. Uh, mainly because it's sometimes bad, sometimes good. You might like like this um, Fire Strike wannabe, the Zuru, I think. Now, Zuru is the company. Uh, I actually have no clue what this blaster is. Uh, comment down below if you know what exactly this is called. Sorry. Um, yeah, Zero is technically not Busby because normally Busby makes stupid stuff like this. Um, but for their first go around uh, to get my attention, um, it looks like a very good uh, form fitting blaster. The grip is surprisingly comfortable. It has some um, uh, pressure points if you don't like pressure points on your uh, grip. Um, the bottom grip here is very comfy, uh, very wor workable, and like I said, it has ammo holder for four darts. I only put in, uh, I think, two or three. Um, so, uh, getting to the orientation of the blaster, it has a very nice uh, side rail. However, you can't really put any attachments to it. It's probably whatever they made attachments, attachment specific. But given the look of it again, it probably won't feed their own uh, accessories if they wanted to. Um, as I also stated, this blaster is very ratchety, and um, at first the pump was too. And um, I don't know which barrel is going to come out, so let's find out. Bottom. Top. Uh, I hope you can see the barreling. Um, the barreling is very, very uh, huge. Uh, more specifically, it might have a little bit of barrel drag if you put the uh, official darts, uh, basically everything nerfed um, to it. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I'm going to try 
the uh, Elite Sticky, because before I uh, lightly modded it, um, it exploded the tip. Uh, it's probably because of the friction and how, um, I guess, good official darts is compared to the knockoffs. Um, so, I would assume, if I remember my ear seal right, that how I fired it previously, um, the top dart might come out uh, first, basically the Elite here. And if it doesn't, that means it's very circuit oriented. It's going to be bottom, it's going to be top. Uh, it just makes up its mind sometimes, I guess, because of the air seal and how you pumped it. Um, also, since uh, we're talking about pump, the pump will not uh, prime when the barrel is down. That's what everybody has been telling me so far online, and they are very much true. Another thing, I think I was lightly pumping it when I first started. And another problem is that when you have official darts that are taller than the uh, dart specific one, it may not feed all the way through the barrels, so you're gonna have to like really jam your finger in there, like right here, to make sure it feeds like so, and it probably bent. So, ear is open. And I guess because of the short stock, I could really show you what would happen. Okay. All right. Um, what the hell? Uh, yeah, that click, I have actually no idea. This happened to me a couple of times. Um, prior to this video, I guess that means it won't fire or something like that, but here's trying. All right, bottom dart again. I must have reset it. And... Yeah, if you heard that loud implosion in the um, barrel, that means, as I suspected, uh, the elite darts are sometimes a little taller than um, the base darts. Probably by a millimeter, you can't even tell. Like, you may have had a good friction, but yet it still won't fire, even if it's like the right size. I don't understand. So basically, if you're going to get this blaster, uh, clearly mod only the posts uh, aside from that it has no other air restrictors get the post out uh, do a shaving on the lip if you have a hobby knife or any kind of knife that can get in there very nicely and very cleanly because um, aside from that um, that's my way out of this kind of uh, sometimes horrific blaster mainly because of the ratchet and when you dry fire It sounds like a freaking thunderbolt just came to your face. Um, so yeah, when you first crack open the blaster and you do the first couple dry fires, it's going to be the loudest it will ever be, probably because of the air seal is now fresh and brand new. Or depends, uh, since this is an x third-party blaster, how many times this thing was probably fired in the store with a kid. Yeah, their packaging is that bad. I think I might save you some time there. Anyway, with that said, um, this is Nerfin16, which a kid on YouTube, and for 15 bucks, I think this was, at my local store, um, I surprisingly got this from a Burlington Co. factory. I had to get, like, a uh, fall and winter gear, and they happen to have a third-party blaster area, like Tommy 20s and usual shit like that. Sorry for the language. Um, and I just, I just wanted to see, like, how cheap these things are, and they're pretty cheap. They're, like, under $20, um... Is it worth the price? Um, if you stick to the Stark Blasters, yes. If you mod it, a de a definitely. But uh, as its own, without shaving the lip and cutting half of the posts, um, probably not. Uh, I, I got it as a joke kind of blaster. But at the same time, if you have no other options, if, there ha if there's a third-party war, uh, I would recommend this. It's a good uh, double-shot blaster. It's... Like, you're up against some other guy who probably has a worse blaster than you, so you're not that, um, destroyed. But if you went up against, like, uh, a modern-day, uh, Mega Blaster or a official Nerf brand, uh, blaster, this is gonna get trumped hard. And we're not even talking fly roll blasters, we're talking, like, Springers. Like, my Springer, um, uh, Strong arm to nowadays stuff can easily kick this thing's ass. So be aware if you're gonna bring this, make this like either your backup blaster or like your last ditch kind of um, maneuver in any of these kinds of wars. If they allow the third parties into either a team deathmatch scenario or HVZ 
just in those kinds of, kinds of game types, I thoroughly see this as like a last ditch kind of blaster. Definitely not a capture the flag because this is more finicky and probably will give away your position, uh, things like that. So with that said, take care and uh, have a good day. Later.